you probably have at least one character that you could say changed your life in some way. Personally, I have quite a few, but by far, the one with the least screen time is this guy. And I know I'm not alone in this. Implementing the mindset he has has made me feel almost superhuman. I've just had this feeling of peace. I get things done so much easier than I used to. And certain things that used to stress me out just don't anymore. And hopefully all of that will apply to you as well by the end of this video. Now, if you haven't watched this series, you don't need to for this video, nor will I try to convince you to watch it. But Haikyuu's Shinsuke Kita is a character you'll wish you heard about soon. Before I get to his genuinely life-changing minds, I'm going to very, very quickly run through his introduction to the series. The match between our protagonist team, Karasuno, and Kita's team, Inarazaki, is one of the most intense, moving arcs I've ever seen. It feels like a battle of life and death, with several of my all-time favorite scenes. It was so intense that there was something I didn't actually notice immediately. Inarazaki's captain is missing. In my head, I subconsciously put Mia Atsuma as their captain, but no one on this side is wearing the number one shirt. Karasuno win the first set, and yet there's still no sign of Inarazaki's captain. If he is there, then for whatever reason, he's not on the starting lineup. Going into the second set, Inarazaki have a huge lead. However, as they start to get near the end of the set, little mistakes start to pile up. Their frustration builds, and before they know it, Karasuno have closed the gap significantly, thanks to multiple service aces from Kageyama. And then it happens. Shinsuke is finally joining the match, and we see that number one shirt. Karasuno are understandably on guard. I mean, this is the captain, after all. But Shinsuke thinks to himself, I'm just a placeholder. You don't need to be scared of me. Very humble words for the captain of a team dubbed the Ultimate Challengers, ranked second in Japan. But whilst he's not a standout player, he just has this presence. Immediately it's noted that it doesn't feel like Karasuno's usual players will work anymore. But of course, if you've seen my videos before, you know I'm not here just to talk about his skill as a player. The first of his many brilliant lines is when I actually wrote down on the whiteboard I have next to me to remind myself of every day and it's what I genuinely believe is life-changing to follow. You do it right and you do it every day. You take care of your body, you tidy up after yourself, you practice gratitude and you practice because doing stuff right just feels good. If that was a lot simpler than you're expecting, well, that's kind of the point. We don't need any other reason besides it feels good, genuinely good. It feels good to take care of yourself. It feels good to take care of your environment. It feels good to practice and work on something. And if you do all of those every day, you'll feel great. The usual self-care advice of bubble baths and treating yourself to some sweet food, it just never really worked for me. I never really felt any better by the end of it. For me, the truest, best way to look after yourself is to do stuff right. You don't need motivation or discipline or anything. It's fun when you allow it to be. And the more thorough you are, the more pride you take in it, the more fun it becomes. And we really shouldn't see ourselves as above these small things. To wake up and do something for your body, to make good food, to go for a walk, even just sitting outside in the sun for a bit, to tidy or clean some part of your house, to verbally express gratitude for something, that's all you have to do. And you'll be amazed how different you feel after and how much you actually enjoy doing it. That's why Kita does all of this for volleyball, despite not planning to take it too seriously or even play at all past graduation. It's why he's still trained and was so diligent. Even when he was so far off the starting lineup, he wasn't even given a uniform. That didn't matter to him. It was simply that doing all of this is more fun and feels better than not doing it. And it links really well to his next point. In the last set of the game, with the two teams reaching a deuce, despite all the pressure, Atsubu doesn't let it get to him at all and continues to put up beautiful sets for his team. 
One of Keita's teammates on the bench then says, that guy's a genius, and he wishes he had talent too. And the whole talent and hard work deal has been done to death in anime, to the point where it's quite rare to see anyone actually add anything new or valuable to it, but Keita definitely does. He says he was once asked if it was frustrating for him to have such incredible younger teammates, with the implication being that players like Atsumu are just born better than him, but he has the humility that I honestly lacked for so long to realise that everything I do on a scale of 1 to 10, guys like him do from 1 to 20, or a more effective 10 or a denser 10, sometimes you even go from A to Z. There are people you might not be able to beat, and it's natural to look at them and think they're amazing. But if you think they're that good for no reason, not only have you lost before you've even played them, but it's rude. Those two characters that they were looking at, Atsumu and Kageyama, are perfect examples. Atsumu actually started off a weaker player than his twin, but just had that little extra drive and worked relentlessly to catch up to overtake him. And as for Kageyama, there's a line from Hinata which sums it up perfectly. He's an incredible guy, but he's not always been that way. From before I even saw a volleyball, he's been playing. On the days I wanted to play with my friends or the days I wanted to play a new game, he was playing volleyball every single day. To write him off as a natural genius is not only plain rude to how much he's sacrificed to get where he is, but it also ensures you'll never get close to his level. He undoubtedly is a natural at volleyball, but the reason he's as good as he is is because he does everything he possibly can. For instance, there's a scene where Date Tech Setter asks Kageyama for some advice and finds out he does fingertip push-ups to strengthen his hands. If he'd just written off Kageyama as naturally better than him, he would have never found that out. Instead, now he's got that little bit closer to his level. And leading on from that is the final thing I took away from Kita. The simple line, I am built upon the small things I do every day, and the end results are nothing more than a byproduct of that. The reason he's not overly fussed by players like Atsumu taking the spotlight whilst he's on the sidelines is because he's humble enough to realise that they simply do more each day towards progressing in volleyball than he does. But if he did want more, he would simply need to do more, and the results would follow. And we see how strongly Kita believes in this ideal. If we go back to right before he was introduced, towards the end of the second set, Inuizaki sub on their pinch server. A nervous first year who says, in middle school, he had just one chance to come off the bench. A single serve which he messed up. Not wanting to repeat that, he goes for a very safe, weak serve into Karasuno's half which is easily received and slammed back by Hinata for a point. And then, for the first time, Inuizaki's crowd boos their own side, much to the confusion of everyone else spectating. As he walks off, Kita tells him, we don't need someone who just gets the ball over, whether we're in the lead or not. It sounds so cold at the time, but as we find out more about Kita, we realise that wasn't how he meant it at all. It's more that there was just no need for Risuki to play it that safe. If he was on the team and he'd been substituted in, his skills had already been recognised. He'd already done the work needed. And so Kita wonders, why does anyone ever get nervous? I guess it's because they feel they need to do more than they currently can. You don't get nervous about eating or cleaning your teeth or going to the bathroom because you do that every day. And he's absolutely right. If you've done it before, why are you doubting you can do it again? Even in situations you can't really perfectly practice for, so for instance a job interview, you can prepare some answers to some common questions, but you're not going to know every single question they ask, so you won't be able to practice for the entire interview. But if you've made it to that stage of the interview, you're clearly qualified enough, so there's no need to try and be more than you already are. I know it's not that easy, Trust me, I used the example of a job interview because I just had one and even bearing that in mind, I was still nervous, but way less than I'd usually be. And it's not that Keita doesn't try to work on himself or improve, he does that plenty, 
It's just that if you've prepared, if you've done what you can at leading up to the big moment, there's no reason to start doubting yourself. There's no reason to believe that your practice is suddenly going to fail you. Of course, that doesn't mean it's going to go perfectly 100% of the time. He doesn't mean that at all. And we see him misreceives as well because He's only human, after all. And we also hear that Osamu had a particularly rough time at the previous tournament, despite practicing plenty. Things can go wrong, especially in something like a sport, and it's completely natural to be at least a bit nervous. But I do still think it makes a great point in that if you've practiced enough, you likely are already enough. You know, give yourself some credit. So Rizuki should have gone all out on his surf because He's got no reason to doubt himself there. We see Daichi going for the exact same thing when he sees Atsumu up to serve. He's been through this plenty of times and got him through it. Sure, there's no guarantee he'll get this one specific serve. He actually did miss the one right before that. But the fact he's practiced this so much is reason enough to have faith in himself. The only reason you would have to worry is if you haven't prepared, you haven't practiced enough. And the beauty is, that's entirely within your control. And of course, the match ends with the Mia Twins' new attack. They'd never practiced being blocked. And following the match, we see Kita saying goodbye to his teammates, where, along with his earlier conversation with Ojiro, we kind of get the final piece of the puzzle, the one that really balanced out his whole philosophy and also this channel. Going back to when he got his captain's shirt, he's so happy he starts crying. And as he walks home, he talks to Urge about how he thinks the process is more important than the results. And he's really internally overanalyzing why he's so happy about getting this uniform. To the point where Ojiro butts in with, who cares about the details? We don't need reasons to be happy. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. Kita just bursts out laughing. And I didn't think anything of it the first time I saw the scene, but man, Ojiro is so right. Maybe we don't need some grand reason that we can justify on every level. We can be happy about results that won't matter, whatever that means, in the long run. We can be frustrated despite doing everything we can. We can feel exhilarated despite losing. We can feel content just cleaning and practicing. Because however we choose to live, there's always going to be some argument against it. You know, there's no doubt that some people look at Keech and think, oh, you know, he's not ambitious enough, for instance. And I'm aware of the irony in that I run a whole channel on this kind of thing, but maybe there comes a point where you've just found what works for you. Not to say you should shut yourself off from any of our ideas, but something about the scene just made it click for me. If you feel like what you're doing genuinely works for you, don't worry about someone else thinking it's wrong. I think you should at least hear people out, but you don't have to walk around carrying that constant pressure of, I should be living like this instead because this person said that. And Obviously, that includes me. Like, my intros are always a bit, oh, you won't believe how amazing this character is because I've got to hook people in, right? But if you've listened to this video or any of my other videos and thought, that doesn't really sound like it would work to me, but now I kind of feel pressured to do that. You don't have to, man. And I personally, once I learned to have the confidence in myself that what I was doing works for me, and that's all the reason I need, that's when you start to really feel at peace. And we see this with Keita too, so this is a super minor spoiler, but if you don't want to find out what job Keita does after he graduates, then jump ahead to the timeshare on screen. Okay, so we found out earlier that he's the top of his class in everything, so presumably he would have a lot of options for where he wanted to go, right? And so it's initially a little bit surprising that he chooses to be a rice farmer, because no doubt he would have had plenty of people, especially like teachers, tell him, oh, but you could do this, or don't you want to use your brain for this? But he's evidently just said, no, nah, this is what I like and it works for me. It's also brilliant in that the field he's looking at is no more or less than the effort he's put in. It's the sum of these small actions he would have done day by day building up. And it's just so beautifully peaceful. It perfectly fits his ideas. But anyway, that was a, a real rant, so. To finish off this video, realistically, a lot of what Keita says is honestly not anything groundbreaking. It's things that are fairly common sense, but expressed in such a way that feels so different. And I think they should be the foundation for everything else. 
you know, start the day with those things because not only are they more important, but it's hard for the rest of it to go wrong when you start the morning like that. We are nothing more than the sum of our daily actions. To fix anything, fix those. The results are nothing more than a byproduct. I also just wanted to thank you all for 50,000 subs. Initially, this channel was just supposed to be something to put my energy towards back when I was going through an extremely tough time. And so all these comments on the screen are the oldest 50 comments I could find from people saying something along the lines of, oh, this channel is going to really grow because those comments meant a lot to me. And even if you're not on here, I have read every comment that's ever been posted on this channel. Like on the studio app, they're just all in a line, so it doesn't take very long. So even if I haven't replied to yours, I have seen it. And so thank you too. Okay, I'll see you in a week or two for another Haiku video. Thank you for watching as always, and have a great day.